When you're working two row stripes and carrying your yarn along an I-cord edge, this happens a lot in my shawls or scarves where you knit the first three stitches and then you work your pattern all the way until you slip the last three stitches. So when I'm done with one color, I just completed a wrong side row, I just place that old color on top to, and to the left of the new color. And then I just bring the new color up to knit. One, two, three, and continue knitting. I am finishing the wrong side row with my other color and I slip the last three stitches with yarn in front, turn to look at the right side, and that color that you're finished with, you're gonna take that color that you just knit and place it to the left on top of the color you're about to knit. And bring that new color up from below and continue knitting. That's all there is to it. If your yarns get a little twisted, you can either rotate your needles to correct the twist like that, just twist the whole work. Or I like to have one yarn to my right and one yarn to my left. And then it's easy if the yarns get twisted just to move one ball of yarn or to twist the yarns around each other so they don't get all tangled. Keep on going with that little crisscross. It's really easy. And that's how I change my yarns and carry them along the I-cord edge. And you can't even see where that happens. Do you see the wrong side? You can't see where those strands of yarns get carried up. And that's the point. So that edge should be not too tight, not too loose. When I'm knitting my I-cord edge stitches, I never knit them super, super tight. So I'll just show you. I'm gonna zoom ahead to the other end of my row with my speedy knitting superpowers. Okay, here's the last three stitches. You slip those with yarn in front. And whenever I knit them on the other side, I just knit them normal. Don't pull the yarn super tight. Just normal knit three stitches. And that's gonna help make your I-cord edge nice and relaxed, not too tight, not too loose. Keep on going with that carrying the yarn trick. What happens when you're knitting a pattern and you work with one color for six or 10 or 12 rows? You're working with one color for a really long time, but you're gonna use that other color later as a little stripe. So if you're not doing two row stripes anymore, let's say I'm gonna do three garter ridges with my blue. So six total rows with my blue and then knit with the green again. I do this trick. So if I'm only knitting with the blue, but I know I'm gonna keep this green attached, and use it later. At the beginning of my right side row, I take my blue yarn and I place it on top and to the left, and then I bring it under and make a full twist like this, and then start knitting. So one more time, I'm ready to knit with my blue yarn again, and I wanna use this green later, I'm gonna make a little crisscross around that green. So basically I want the blue to go on top and then the blue goes under and then up. So it makes a full twist. Do you see how that blue is twisting around that green strand? One more time, just cross it to the left, take that working color under and bring it up to knit. That's going to trap that green strand of yarn and carry it along the edge even further. So I do that full twist, that full cross, with if I'm carrying a color up without knitting it over four, six, or more rows. Keep on going and I'll show you the next right side row. Once again, I wanna do another blue garter ridge. So I wanna keep using my blue, but that green I'm gonna use later. So you just worked with the blue and you're going to continue working with the blue. Take that blue yarn to the left, Take it under the green yarn and ready to knit for that full twist. So that's gonna lock that green yarn in place. Keep on going with your blue yarn. I'm at the end of my wrong side and I slipped the last three with yarn in front. So I have a big thick blue stripe now and I'm gonna use the green yarn now. So I'm gonna just place my blue yarn to the left 
And now you can just bring the green yarn up to knit. One, two, three. Whenever you're using a new color after it's being carried along the edge for a longer distance, don't knit that first stitch too tight. So you don't want to pull on that yarn and make a really tight puckered I-cord edge there. Just make sure you can stretch your I-cord edge normally for those first three stitches. And continue to knit with that green yarn. And let's look at the wrong side. Because you did that little crisscross, look at that. Do you see that green yarn? How it's trapped inside the I-cord edge? That's because of that full twist that I showed you with the blue yarn. So you can't even see that green yarn trapped in that I-cord edge. And you could do that for 10 rows, even 20 rows if you want to, depending on the pattern. Some of my patterns use that color only every so often, and then it's uh, carried along the I-cord edge. So use that trick. It's really easy, and it just takes a little motion, a little maneuver, but then you don't have to break your yarn and weave in all those ends. The most important trick I'll tell you to remember is to not carry that green yarn whenever you're working with it again. Make sure you stretch the I-cord and then knit the three stitches so that you don't pull on that stitch too tight and make a really tight I-cord edge. You want the whole I-cord edge to feel nice and relaxed. You don't want a tight spot. So follow that trick, and if you want more tips and tricks like this, you can check out my West Knits workshops. Those are at westknits.com. I teach you how to knit brioche, how to design your own shawls, and a lot of fun tips and tricks with those online workshops that you can watch at any time. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.